Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to A Look in the Lab. I'm Fran Parathiris from Zahn Dental Education. And joining me today is Dora Rodriguez, who is the president of ID Dental in New Jersey. And also we have Dennis Urban that will be joining us. I'm sorry, um, right now Dennis is having a little technical difficulties, but we're working really hard at getting him in. Dennis is the director of operations and clinical education for Microdental. Um, and we're so excited to have both of them uh, join us here on A Look in the Lab. Dora, thank you so much for joining us. Um, how are you today? I am good, how are you? I'm doing really well. Um, today's discussion is about denture conversions. And we have Dora and Dennis joining us today because they're both experts on this uh, type of workflow and um, restorative uh, treatment. So we want this to be as interactive as we possibly can. So we've provided a couple of poll questions for our attendees to uh, be able to answer for us. Um, so we would appreciate it if you would give us your feedback once we launch some of these questions. Dora, can you give us a brief introduction on yourself and how you got into denture conversions? <laughs> yes. So I am from Portugal and I went to a school to be a dental technician in Portugal at the time. And this is probably 17 years ago. Um, it was three years uh, at the University of uh, Dentistry. And um, I graduated and um, as a dental technician and I started working uh, right away, right after college um, and my, my, my degree at the Mallow Clinic. And, and whoever is in the full large industry, they probably know Tolo Mallow was the developer of the OLM4. So I started working there. I started working at the removals department, um, but I graduate, I, I moved to the, um, to the surgery department to assist to the all fours and that's how i got my my training and my my the whole expertise that i have now is started there and continue for many years until i decided to open my leave them and open my own laboratory so focus doing the same thing but uh everything started then um back then with, with them in, in portugal so tell us a little bit about your laboratory. Is that basically all you do are conversions all day yeah. long, every day? So not just conversions, I just do the full large. Then oh. that includes not only the conversion that it happens at the day of the surgery, but also the planning, the pre-planning for um, that day and also the final. So I try to have a bundle for everything. I don't like to do conversions only. Um, I don't like to do dentures. I don't do dentures. So all the dentures that I do is for conversion. So I am very specific just because I feel there's a lot involved with this type of cases, just because conversions are easy to do once you, um, you know, work the workflow, but there's a lot more involved than just that. You need to focus on the planning. You need to focus on the, the surgery and also the finals. So that's like, that's why I like to have it all under me. Um, and I like to, to, to do, if I start with a patient, I want to finish with the patient doing the conversion. I don't want uh, any other lab to, to design the denture and I go for the conversion and I finish because there's might be some um, problems within the, with that workflow that I find um, that I, I, I found in the past and I don't like it. Um, but I try to control everything. So for my patients, I in, in my laboratory, my doctors, we do from the pre-planning, the conversion, and the final restoration also. Okay, that's excellent. So you're basically in the operatory with the patient from treatment planning. Is that how it works? So for treat, well, no, the doctor takes the records. Um, I don't need to go to the office for that. I do uh, everything that I need to facilitate getting those records ready. If the patient has no teeth, we do try and to make sure that the bite is proper, the vertical dimension established before we go for surgery. If we cannot do that, I just pre-plan the case. Normally I communicate with the oral surgeon or, um, or the, the restorative doctor, whoever is part of the case to make sure that we are all um, you know, in the same page within the, the treatment plan. Uh, so once we go to surgery, we have an understanding that everything's going to work out because we plan all the details before um, that day. <laughs> Basically, how does the workflow go for a conversion, let's say, into an all-on-four case? How does so that the 
the work, it, everything starts with the planning and the planning is getting proper records from the doctors and proper records, um, you know, if his impressions, good impressions, if his scans, good scans, uh, with a lot of, uh, the, with the digital dentistry growing and all these new doctors getting internal scans, it's still important to get all the data from, from, from them. So that is a struggle sometimes, but a little bit of education is all they need. And uh, as long as you understand what you need for the case to be successful, um, they're pretty comfortable with me uh, specifically my doctors telling them what I need and what to do and what to what to what steps to take to to accomplish those good records so we records photos and then I pre-plan the case and if um, most of the time now I do I try to do everything digitally I slowly graduated from the analog to the digital workflow so all my designs I'm able to share uh, to my doctors and we with all the records that we have and they approve it they, they they can see it beforehand sometimes they'll send it to the to the patient as well mm -hmm. and if everything go if the plan is right if they're happy I just process um, those dentures so once the day of the surgery uh, comes we're ready to do that conversion in the office so the pre-planning is I feel that pre-planning the planning of the, 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 that denture is a lot more important than the denture conversion itself that happens at the end of the, at the day of the surgery because uh -huh. again making some holes and unfortunately there's still a lot of people that thinks that a conversion is just making some holes through the denture and pick up some cylinders it's a lot more than that at least in my perspective and the way that I see the conversions you have to be able to look for problems ahead and 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 compromise sometimes and, and tell the doctor, well, if you place this angulated abutment this way, we might have a problem down the road if you're changing the lower or the upper. So there's a lot more than just the conversion itself that happens at the surgery. So I am very specific with my doctor's pre-planning is everything. Uh, so, so the conversion goes well. And then once you get to the final restoration, you have all the restorative space needed, all the, the screw axes are in the right place and we don't have any any problems or or concerns once we we get to the final stage of the of that that, uh, that, that uh, case. It's basically very good communication between you and the clinical team to be able to yes get the patient exactly yes. what they need to get you yes. on the door. exactly mm -hmm. and. For this case, I, I like to say, and I'm very blessed to to work with amazing doctors and, and teams that, you know, is not, I'm not just the lab, the dental technician is not, they call Dora. It's like, I'll text her. It's not ask the front office to call the lab or, or the lab can call the front office and then we communicate. It's personal. It's more, it's a lot of it's relationships that you have to create in order to be comfortable working with them and being able to point the finger if something goes wrong and it's not you did something wrong and I'm right is figure out if something goes wrong where did we fail and how we can fix it so next time it doesn't happen so you need to have that relationship and that respect and that trust between all the teams um, everyone involved in the team in order to, to be successful with these cases. I love that you said we, because basically it's not you and I when it comes no. to something like this. And really, you know, I, I feel that way about the labs anyway and the clinical teams. It should be we, because yes. you all should be working together. And and that's that's amazing. Yes. That's really good work. Um, tell me about the different types of conversions that we can do as far as workflow goes. So I normally say that there are three. But there's a lot more. Depends on the system. Depends on how you turn around that conversion. So first and foremost, you can do it the same day, uh, the day of the surgery with the patient in the doctor's office, or you can deliver, or you can bring all the information to the lab and then deliver the next day. So mm -hmm. all my cases are done the same day in the doctor's office or the surgeon's office. So I don't do anything for the next day. Um, so just there, um, with my, my process and my, my different workflows, I tend to say that there are three that, that you can do the same day. And the first one is just the regular traditional conversion that it's been, we've been doing for so many years now that is, um, you know, trying to adapt the denture, um, once the multi-unit abutments are placed, uh, the implants and the multi-unit, uh, the multi-unit abutments are placed, we, um, mark the 
where they are on the denture. We drill holes through the denture and we pick up those cylinders uh, with, with the denture. So that is the old traditional way that most of the analog labs um, might do up to date because that's what we've been doing for so long. Mm -hmm. um, so I tend to say that is the traditional way. The um, smart way, and this is like the second one, and I have a PDF for my doctors that I specifically say, um, you know, even doctors, I, I tend to have a lot of the new doctors that never done conversions before. So I, I have a PDF. This is the type of conversions they can do. You can do the traditional and I explain how it is. You can do the second one that I, I, I call it the, the smart conversion that is done with this smart system that was developed uh, in 2019. And uh, Dr. Crawford in North Carolina, I believe he developed this system and it's pretty amazing to work with because you don't have to drill holes through the denture anymore, as long as the denture seats on top of those uh, cylinders that comes with a kit. Um, that's all you need. You, you basically pick up the denture just like a locator. And this might be a little difficult to understand. Well, it's a locator, but I, I want to screw retain uh, temporary. So there's a whole process and um, for the system, but uh, it's just another way of making the conversion a lot easier and, and faster and more uh, even stronger because you don't have to drill holes through the entire denture to make sure that the denture fits um, through the passes through this, those cylinders for the pickup. Mm -hmm. And then um, if you're transi transitioning to the digital uh, era and the digital uh, technology is the digital workflow that I use um, not a lot still because everyone has to be able to um, accomplish that for that workflow. And the digital is basically you get all the data um, that you need at the day of the surgery. You still pre-plan your denture, but you get all the data after the surgery. You, you merge everything on your software and you redesign. You basically convert the denture digitally. You convert it on your computer and then you just print one the restoration ready to insert um, that same day. Again, this is with me. Uh, there's a lot of labs that we, even with the digital technology and the word digital workflow, they prefer to deliver the next day. There's a lot less pressure. Yes, there is, but my doctors are used to the same day. So um, if they want that route, I still have to, <laughs> I'm under pressure because I'm mm -hmm. not in the doctor's office, but I need to come to the lab and get all the data and uh, redesign the case and print and get everything done within an hour, an hour and a half. Um, to deliver that same day. So there, there are several, and this is the ones that I normally do. I'm sure there's more, uh, or like tweaks here and there that you can apply in, oh, this is a different version of a, the conversion, but these are the ones that I do or that I have available for my doctors to do. So it's too much. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. I mean, this is great, great information. It gives everybody kind of an idea of what kind of workflow they they are, feel comfortable if they're actually starting or maybe thinking of transitioning into a completely digital workflow. Um, I just want to ask you, Dora, so you can, so basically the design can be done on any design software, let's say 3Shape? Yes. So you, this, if you're going that route, you design your denture and any design software that you can design a denture um, and you, you save that plan, that, 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 that uh, um, information, that design, uh, the day of the surgery, you, the surgery happens, implants are placed, multi-units are placed, we take, I use photogrammetry, so uh, we have special uh, scan markers that go on the, um, on the implants to capture the passivity between them without having to do um, a verification jig or an impression that same day, and we merge everything together um, and then we just redesign, readapt the denture that we design into a fix, uh, you know, with a new, with a, to the new tissue, to the new jaw after suturing that changed. Mm -hmm. And we just place the holes. You basically do the conversion on the computer. You're not doing it in the patient's mouth. You're basically are designing, redesigning your, your whole case. And then you just send it to the printer and you print one, one bridge ready to insert. Of course, you still have to go through the curing and cleaning right. and a little bit of composite, but uh, it's just a lot less work for the doctors. But again, keep in mind for this type of um, workflow, this is more for those uh, centers that have a, a, a laboratory in-house. 
because they have all the equipment there. With me, I am limited because I can only use this workflow with doctors that have a printer in the office. There are not many, unfortunately, because I would love to, most of my doctors have one because it will facilitate the work a lot. Um, but because they don't, um, I have to utilize my lab and some of my doctors are within an hour away. So we cannot do the digital workflow with those doctors because there's no way to go back and forth and spend, you know, have the patient waiting um, until the end of the day to, to receive that restoration. So it's just easier to do it um, in, in the office with a smart system. That's what I use the most now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And as far as the analog system goes, I mean, how long does it usually take to have to get that restoration ready for the day of the surgery usually? So I, for the pre-plan, um, I normally tell my doctors two weeks. I don't really need two weeks. I can turn around in a day because I just need to design it and print it. I print all my dentures now. Okay. I transitioned from the analog to, I was um, setting teeth and, and, and inject the acrylic pack and all that. I transitioned to, to the digital uh, side and I don't want anything else. <laughs> I've been designing my dentures. I, I use, um, I use Flexera. I print my dentures in Flexera and, uh, I have two Weinsteins now because, uh, I do have quite a few, <laughs> a lot of surgeries sometimes within the same month. So they're always running and I'll print teeth in one side. I'll print the base. I designed the case, uh, split file. And uh, we just print the two parts. We we bond them together and uh, I have it ready for the next day. So I tend to tell my doctors, well, I need two weeks because I have more surgery schedule. I have finals. I have a lot more things to do in the lab. But uh, if that really is a need, we can turn around within a day because I just need to design and print and it can be ready for the next day. So that's an advantage for the digital workflow because I'm designing and once I'm done, my assistant is taking care of all the printing and assembling it and everything. That, that's fantastic. I mean, I, if you don't mind asking, um, how did you decide to go with Flexera? I mean, there's so many resins and so many printers out there. Wow, we're getting- well, Dennis is here. <laughs> Great, fantastic. He's connecting. Okay, made it. <laughs> I'm so happy, Dennis. Great. Thanks to, you know, Katie over in uh, Zahn giving us, uh, helping out a tremendous amount to get you here. This is fantastic. Thanks thank you. for yeah. hanging there, Dennis. We appreciate you. No, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. I, for some reason, I, I was just saying I did 100 webinars last year. I never had a, a technical problem, and the figures today I have one. So uh, anyway, I'm here. So just oh, great to see you. And, and thank you. Great, so great to have you. We were just talking about the different types of denture, uh, denture uh, conversions with Dora. Um, basically, she gave us a little insight on how she, you know, became to be such an expert in this field and how right. she basically, you know, loves what she does. She has a clinical team, a bunch of clinical teams that she deals with specifically on all on four and conversions. Um, but I just, you know, I gave everybody kind of like a little intro about who you are before you joined us. So basically, can you give us a little brief intro about yourself, what you're doing right now and how sure. you're an expert on den uh, sure. dental conversions? Yeah, I would, well, I'm, 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 this is my 44th year in the dental industry um, and um, uh, director of operations and education for Microdental uh, New York, a brand new facility, uh, state of our facility in New York and Long Island. And uh, I've been in the, long, in the field for a long time, you know, specializing in dentures and removals, implant dentures and those types of restorations. And um, I do an average of maybe 50 to 75 lectures a year and trainings. Uh, last year was exceptional because I really overdid it. I did about 100 webinars. You know, wow. and uh, but um, yeah, we're still doing a lot of the uh, your chair side conversions. Uh, I, I see things changing, though, in the future with chair, chair side conversions. I think it's going to be more more uh, predictable with uh, and it is now too. It's, it's happening now more predictable with um, digital technology and, uh, you know, and, and getting uh, doctors and, and surgeons more in their comfort zone on these types of cases. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. You can see that happening. I mean, everywhere you turn. Yes. more and more we're getting more comfortable with the digital workflow and, and that's basically what we were just talking about like what that mm -hmm. looks like what the digital workflow basically looks like when right. you're you know, going completely digital um mm -hmm. do you have any comments on that yeah well i i like it i like the idea of you know what we're doing now is uh, a lot of times we're utilizing the surgical guide 
uh, for the final restoration, for the final provisional, you know, mm -hmm. whether it be a denture or whether it be, uh, you know, uh, something that's going to be more of a, um, a PMMA type of provisional, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, and, uh, but most of the time, you know, when the doctor is asking for a denture uh, type of hybrid case, you know, we're doing the case planning, uh, I'm utilizing, um, you know, the existing denture or I'm making a new denture, you know, so, uh, you know, and it's pretty much, you know, we have to follow the, the protocol uh on you know what on step by step every time because if we deviate from that you're going to have problems you know so it's it's you know uh, you know i had the opportunity to observe and be present with uh, many implant companies uh, and representatives and experienced conversion technicians uh watching them in the operatory that's how i learned a lot of this you know but uh mm -hmm. You know, it also helped that I was experienced and proficient with removables and implant dentures. So, uh, you know, if anybody's thinking of getting into this, you know, I, I think they, you know, attend hands-on courses with, um, you know, companies like Nobel, Strauman, and those other types of implant companies and learn all you can, you know, because uh, the knowledge and success comes with doing this over and over and, and, uh, and feeling comfortable with it. Because if you've not, you're not comfortable, uh, it's going to show. And it's going to show with the, the practitioner who really a lot of the practitioners want to get in their comfort zones on these types of cases. And we have to help them with that. So. Oh, absolutely. That's what Dora was just saying. Dora, I don't know if you want to reiterate a little bit about like what you do with your clinical team. You know, she used the word we. And if there's a problem, yep. we need to figure out what happened and we need to solve the problem together. There's no such, I mean, because there's such a trust, right, Dora? Yes. And, and the thing is that they rely a lot on the technicians to tell them what to do. And sometimes it's not even your call to say anything, but they're, what do I do now? And I have, we have to figure out, uh, you know, what to tell them in a good way, or if something goes wrong and if the bite is off, like what happened? I'm like, you have to find a way to tell them nicely that they didn't hold it properly and they didn't do that step very correct, <laughs> you know, that they could do it better. So right. uh, it's about trust and it's about, um, they need to, yes, if they're never done, they rely on you, but once they get comfortable, then they should be able to, to, to do it by themselves, but they always rely on a technician. If, even little details, they mm -hmm. overlook just because they think you did. And it's not in our position to do. And I do, it does happen quite a few times with a couple of doctors. So you have to also pinpoint and know your doctors enough to step up and tell them what to do in some positions that with others you might not need. But that comes with you being comfortable also and and, right. and having the experience to, and knowledge enough to step up and telling them and helping them understand how the process goes and how everything uh, should work. Right. I definitely think that, you know, as far as talking with a lot of doctors out there, that they do rely very heavily with cases like this and, you know, um, difficult cases of like any type of restoration. They, they rely heavily on their laboratory and their technicians. They definitely try to get advice, um, you know, and guidance. And I think that's so important, you know, that they realize how important the and that thing, I, I think that they should go also for training. I, I do have quite a few new doctors and mm -hmm. it's the first time and they are apprehensive and not comfortable, but mm -hmm. because the technician is and the surgeon is, if it's the restorative doctor, um, everything flows because we know each other already. We don't know the third part, but they get to see how we work and how we complement each other. So mm -hmm. the next time they're more comfortable. And of course, then they see that they can offer that a solution to their patients and then and they invest themselves and in a course to understand more. I feel that is the very first case uh, that they don't know if it's worth it, or maybe they had a really um, uncomfortable situation in the past and they said, never again, I don't do this because this is too hard. And sometimes it's not the process. It's just the team that um, should be a, a <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. And to add, add to that, you know, you, you have to first address the real, realistic patient expectations. You know, there, there are many patients who would love to get into um, a screw retain hybrid denture, but due to challenges with the transition zone or smile line or uh, with aesthetics on the gingiva, all the way to the patient being, being able to pro properly perform oral hygiene, you know, this could sometimes be a problem. And that's when an over denture with attachments is, is pretty, pretty much a better option. 
you know, there's sort of so many different things we have to look at. And you might have mentioned this earlier because I missed the beginning, but, uh, you know, there's so many different things we look at in case planning, you know, uh, your adequate bone volume for implant placement, you know, a bone height uh, more than 12 meter, millimeters to allow for at least 10 millimeters left length of the implant, and then bone width, um, uh, restorative volume, at least 12 to 15 millimeters uh, you know, on restorative volume. And, and that takes into consideration a lot of different things from the abutment, the hybrid bar, the space uh, that you need for acrylic uh, and teeth, and also the space between the, the uh, tissue and the, and the final restoration. And, you know, I've seen so many cases fail over the years with other, other doctors coming to me and saying, you know, we did these types of cases before and we failed. And a lot of times it's because there wasn't enough room and they try to do these cases when there's not enough room for to do these types of uh, hybrid uh, screw retained cases. You know, so there's so many things you have to look at. You know, it's a long process. It's a very expensive process for the patient. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it could be very, could be very profitable for the laboratory, uh, but we have to do it the right way. Yeah. Yeah, it's a realistic expectation, so important, and that's good communication between the clinical team and the laboratory. You right. know, that's so important to, to have that dialogue going with each and every Definitely. case. Dennis, is it is it common practice a lot to have, like, like let's say, you know, technicians from microdental going into, you know, offices to get these findings and be able to discuss what the proper protocol should be for each patient? Yes, definitely. It takes the entire team to make these cases successful. You know, the dentist, the surgeon, the periodontist, the technicians working on the case uh, and the patient. You have to get the buy-in from the patient also. So, you know, the first thing we look at, like I mentioned earlier, is the adequate room that we need for these types of cases. Um, and if the patient wants to go into a denture uh, again, maybe that had previously had a denture, has some problems, or maybe they want to go into more of a fixed type of restoration at the end, you know, with, uh, you know, with individual units on, on a bar or something like that, or titanium bar, or even zirconia, mm -hmm. you know, so we really have to be upfront with the patient and it includes everybody planning these types of cases. Otherwise it's going to be a failure, you know, and so it's common practice for us to either do a Zoom call, a uh, screen share, or going to the office and sitting down with the whole team to make this successful. Yeah, yeah I, I could see where this could be a little bit of an intimidating process, but you know what, when you have the, the right uh, education and training and, you know, you have good people behind you that you can confer with, it just makes, it makes a big deal. And it'll be, it's such a great thing for the patient to be able to, you know, walk away with uh, Definitely. Uh, one of the conversions waiting for their, you know, final restoration. Um, right, right. Uh, yeah. Dora was just saying how, you know, she really embraces 3D printing now with her cases. Yeah. Like she, she um, Dora, you want to just reiterate really quick for Dennis, like what your process is? Yes. So I transitioned from the processing the dentures in the laboratory. I do everything digitally now. And uh, I designed the dentures by file. I print the teeth. I print the base and I bond them together. I use Flexera, Flexera Smile Ultra Plus. Mm -hmm. um, you asked me before why I went to Flexera. Yeah. It took me a year and a half to make that decision because mm -hmm. I didn't trust. I have a printer for a very long time. I started with the, the, the a printer back in 2019, I think. And mm -hmm. I tried different resins at the time and they were not good for, for dentures. It was just too brittle. So yeah. I didn't want to uh, try that on the conversion. The worst thing that it can happen is you do a case and then, well, it broke. Like, I don't like that. <laughs> I yeah, do yeah. everything correctly. Why are we going to break? I, I look at the restorative space. I look at the planning. I look at everything. So that shouldn't break. So I was hesitant in, in transition to the digital um, ventures just because I didn't trust the resins. I tried a couple and I was not comfortable. So I stick with processing in the laboratory until Flexera came out. And this was a year and a half after Flexera because I didn't invest it right away. Um, I had a, one of my doctors that he was using Flexera. I followed a couple of other doctors that were using Flexera and I see good results. I fell, followed them for, for a year and a half and I decided to, to, to try it. And uh, I've been very happy with them. Um, very successful. I transitioned to all digital dentures for conversion. Again, I don't do traditional dentures. Uh, I try mm -hmm. to stay away from them. So there might be a difference because I don't know how long they're going to last if you're doing a, a digital denture with Flexera to be delivered as a denture. I don't do those. I do dentures mm -hmm. for conversions that normally stay in the mouth within two, four to six months. Which 
So, so I don't have any problems. I, I changed um, all my dentures to Flexera since March and uh, I, I'm very happy with it. And it's just a lot easier to accomplish. It's fast. And I design my assistant. I send it to the printer. My assistant prints and, and assembles and get it ready. So we can move a lot faster. And the results are amazing. The resin is beautiful. And um, I, I'm being very successful with it. The, the materials bond really well. The We're using resin. Um, uh, for the pickup of the the, the cylinders, uh, we're using Q resin from Redent, I think, um, and it's really it's it's great. The the workflow just flows, and and I love the 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 result. So that's what I've been doing. I don't I'll do a traditional denture in case the doctor or the patient is very picky and they really want those premium looking teeth, um, mm -hmm. you know, without translucency because we do have some patients that want that and they they research and they saw the ivoclar teeth or or, or refline or something and they want that specifically mm -hmm. and we can do that but um i try to to just transition everything to the digital because with photogrammetry now that i have uh you know i can design my my dentures do the conversion chair side um and then once i move to the final i can just bring my final temporaries to my design and redesign everything and use the same mold same tooth size everything is the same if the patient is happy there's no changes if right. i need to move the midline it's five minutes so it's a lot more efficient now with the digital technology to, to be mm -hmm. able to do these cases and flexor you can only print flexor on the einstein right and you had mentioned that you have two yes i have two einsteins yes uh, um yeah yes i, I print simultaneously yes the 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 flexera is um you can only is fda approved for you know you you have to follow a fda <laughs> workflow yes. um printing workflow and the, the flexera can only be um uh, printed on the einstein or the vision one you one, want yeah. the was the printer before yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I only I got the ice in this year. Like I said, I it took me a long time. I, I follow doctors. I have one of my doctors that he used to have um, the old one, and he also got a, 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 the Einstein now. And uh, I it just it, it's it's amazing. It's super fast too. Even for the day of if we do the the digital workflow and we do um, the the digital conversion, it's twenty five minutes to print the protocol. The 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 brick. Wow. It's it's super fast. So it just speed up speeds up the entire process. We do this. I do the pre plan. We go for surgery. We get all the records after. The redesign depending how crazy the case is. It might uh -huh. take 20, 40 minutes. And uh, you send it to the printer. It's another twenty five minutes. You finish assemble and you're ready to go. So you can do it within an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. I mean, the, it really depends. I'm not very fast. I take my time. I'm very picky. Uh, sometimes they surgery way more than I should. But um, but depending how how fast you are and how comfortable you are designing, you you can accomplish amazing times yeah. with digital. Right, and you always and you always have that file, and you know it's predictable. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, we're getting I'm getting more and more away from the uh, traditional way. But I have spoiled my doctor so much so much over the years. But the high end teeth like Vita and Ivoclar, and they they love those. They love the aesthetics on these types of teeth. But you know we've been doing a lot with uh, printed technology also. You know, and you know utilizing the, like I mentioned earlier the surgical guide. And but you know it's a lot of the doctors that we used to go chair side on uh, with and help. Uh, they're doing this themselves now. We send it over to them. Uh, the the uh, access holes are pre-drilled, and the conversion that they're doing themselves in the office. So we're getting, uh, uh, you know, we're getting seeing more and more doctors getting in their comfort zone uh, doing the conversion. Some doctors don't want to spend the time; they just want us to come in and help out and support them. But um, yeah, it's you know, it's great that we have all the different choices here. You know, so I think the last I've heard. I think we're only up to 8% of uh, digital technology on dentures in the country compared to the traditional, and we're getting there pretty rapidly. You know, believe, and I'm going to say I'm a big fan of, of, of digital dentures. I really am. I'm trying to get our doctors on board with a lot of these, uh, the new technology. You know, a couple of the obstacles I have is with the try-ins, you know, with the, instead of a wax try-in, a printed try-in and things like that. But yeah, I, I like the idea of a you know predictable um, a printed uh, denture, or we even we're doing we're even doing mill dentures for uh, for conversions. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I like that I like the idea of that predictability. And you always have that file, and you can utilize that file, like Dora, Dora said, throughout the whole process, which is great. Yeah. It's it's fantastic. It's fantastic. If yes, someone I... if someone were to start to decide to get going with with conversions, I mean, what kind of 
like advice would you give them to get started? Dennis? Never did. Yeah, I would say, you know, first, make sure that you can support this, support this type of offering with knowledge and the right people, you know? Uh, so I think that's, you know, especially with the technician doing the actual conversion, this includes, you know, it has to include a person who is, uh, has the right personality, doesn't panic in the office if something's gonna go wrong, <laughs> and uh, one who's experienced and who's a problem solver. Because how many times have we had problems? I mean, I've seen major, major problems in the, in the dental office on conversions, but a lot of times doctors are too brave, maybe it's a six or eight plant implant uh, case, and they're trying to cure these uh, temporary cylinders, everything at once, and the, and the, the denture is hanging down and the occlusion is off. We have to wind up reaming out the whole denture and doing it over again. So we have to remain calm and give them solutions and, and, and help the patient too, because you really can get excited in front, of the patient, in front of a patient and act like this is like a, a dire emergency that can't be, can't be solved. And I've seen that in the office with other technicians, and it gets kind of crazy. You yeah. know, but, uh, and many times, like I mentioned earlier, we need to get the general dentist in that comfort zone on these types of cases, you know, talk to your implant reps also if you want to, and to get feedback on past experiences of people who are doing the conversions. You know, they they usually know the surgeons and the general dentists in your area doing these types of cases. And believe me, I learn a lot. You know, from our implant, we partner so closely with our implant companies, and it really works well. With, especially with a newer technician getting out there in the field and doing these types of plant planning on cases and conversions. Yes, or, or even tag along with you and to another surgery. I have um I have a big surgical center and I get most of referrals from them. So it's the same surgeon, but different referrals. And sometimes when there's someone that it, it never done one, they invite them to see how the other the other doctor works and how we work as a team. And once they see how we are, how we handle the situation, they become more comfortable um, to do those type of cases. And yes. Training is really important just because you have someone that you can rely on doesn't mean that you don't need the training because definitely you do. Because again, they sometimes you might not look at every single detail because uh, at least with me, I, I'm so used to this to this type of cases that I don't look for every single detail that maybe I should with certain doctors because they're not ready or they don't know what to look for like I do. So they need the proper training um, in order to, to, if they want to offer that that type of treatment to, to their patients, they need the proper training to, to do so. So implant companies normally have trainings for, for that, that they can, um, you know, look for and, and at least to get more comfortable. And of course, once you get into those cases, the just getting comfortable with your technician and your restorative um, with your surgeon, um, everything can be learned as not everything, but you can learn as you go, but definitely makes you more comfortable knowing, having a background and attending some lectures and, and webinars and, and hands-on experience also. It's not just lectures and webinars. You have to get your hands on, on, on some, some following other doctors too. Definitely, I agree. You know, and, and even with the as mentioned on digital technology, you know, a lot of the younger our younger technicians here they want to get into digital technology, and I say you really have to learn the science behind what you're doing, even with digital technology. And uh, you know, it's funny uh, because um, you know, like you said, it, the training is essential and hands-on is essential too. But you have to look at all the aspects uh, with occlusion and everything in between. You know, from the onset of occlusion for, to where you're going on the on the end product. And then plan these cases correctly. And you know, getting doctors in that comfort zone, like I mentioned earlier, I remember one doctor going into an office and he pulled me aside. He goes, Dennis, I'm really nervous. I, I never, I've never done this before. And this was a case. I remember the case really, really clearly. Uh, mm -hmm. And we had uh, uh, an immediate denture. I think it was eight extractions and it was six implants. And the patient came in, and you think this would be such a traumatic experience. The patient came into the oral surgeon in the morning, had their uh, uh, teeth extracted, implants placed. They walked down the street, I was in New York City, they walked down the street to the general dentist's office and I was there and we did the conversion there. And uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, you know, I'm saying to myself, this patient's probably have gone through hell today and really wants to go home. I asked her, I said, what are you, how are you feeling? She goes, I feel great. Everything went successfully. The doctor was put at ease. And I said, you're going to go home and just take it easy. She goes, no, I'm going to a Broadway play with my husband tonight. So, so it's just, you think this is so traumatic, but really it's, it's such a, um, if you do it correctly and follow protocol, Everything is predictable, it really is. But I think that that says something about who is actually there with that patient because they probably exhume the confidence because they feel good about what they're doing. They're confident that they can actually give this patient something that, that she could actually go home and go to a Broadway play. 
that yeah. night. So she probably yeah. felt like I'm in good hands. I'm yeah. good. I'll be fine. And I'm just going to go out there and enjoy my life, which is really why we're here. We want them to be able to smile and eat and, and feel comfortable in their own skin and, and you know, live their lives, right? With a beautiful smile. Yeah. So um, and at, at the, the end, end of, that's what it's about, you know. At the end of the day, that, that's the reward is knowing yeah. that the patient gets up and they look at the mirror and they cry and they're yeah. happy and, they, and, and they're going home and, you know, that they, they, they'll be able to show their smile to, to, to their spouses or children or grandchildren. And, and, and mm -hmm. it's just amazing feeling knowing that everything went well and every, you know, everyone working together and getting that reward from the patient at the very end, it makes it all worth it. Absolutely. It has to be such a good feeling being in that operatory and seeing that, yes. you know, like all your hard work was for yes. this person now who can go out there and can smile and, and feel confident. And that's a, that's a great feeling. Right. And usually after these conversions, you know, what we do, we get, to, we get the oral surgeon. If he's, if he's still there, uh, general dentist, myself, or the whatever technician is there uh, and the patient, we get, we and get a, a picture of, uh, you know, before and after. And it's great. And what's, it's such a great feeling. I've, I've had doctors open bottles of champagne that, at the end of the day when they just wanted to celebrate this, these types of cases, because, you know, on, on an average, you know, these, a lot of the, the, the cost factor on this for the patient is sometimes twenty five to thirty thousand dollars on a final but the whole case, sometimes more, you know, and yeah. this is an entry case. So you really want to get this because it's done correctly uh, and uh, have that patient really feel comfortable. You know, and uh, that's what we're there for, too. Like I said, you have to write the right personality, the right experience and uh, the right team to make this all successful. I mean, in this time, everything is just so expensive and, and people are really sacrificing, you know, to be able to get this kind of treatment to get done at the, at the end of the day, you just want it to be successful. Absolutely. And I can see them wanting to celebrate. I mean, I think it's great. And there's so many options out there. It doesn't have to be a, a, a hybrid denture or conversion uh, or, you know, share side conversion, those types of cases. But there's so many different cases we can, they can choose from on, on, on denture cases, from uh, uh, attachments, over dentures, over dentures with a bar that they can take out and cleanse and feel comfortable with and fill their facial features out, you know, mm -hmm. to make them. It's, you look at all those aspects and you look at how we, we make a patient feel and look, and it's amazing. So, I mean, I've been doing this for close to 45 years now, and I still get excited about this industry, where we're going, what we can do for patients on an everyday basis. And it changes lives. And I know it's a cliche saying that, but it's true. <laughs> we feel no, good. It yes. Right? It's, it's great. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. And a, a lot of times I feel like, you know, the profession is so understated, especially coming from the clinical side. Um, you know, the patient really doesn't understand much about what the dental technician is doing. And you know what, I feel like the dental technician should be celebrated every day for your expertise and your artistry and the knowledge and what it takes to actually do this every day, how much you need to keep learning you know, keep staying with the times. Like you were saying, Dennis, you know, younger technicians coming out of school now, they just want to rush into, you know, digital den digital uh, technology and workflow. But really, how do you feel about actually for them to know how, why we do certain things and really learn the analog side as well before like yeah. jumping into the whole digital world? Right, well, that's a great question. You know, being chair of the National Board for Certification, I have to get a little plug there and being involved with the NADL. Uh, one of the things we, you know, we're working on is a digital um, designer uh, certification. And that's gonna include uh, a comprehensive exam on everything and it's a science behind what you're doing and it's important. Mm -hmm. So in the future, who's ever gonna be certified uh, is going to have to take those the practical, I mean, the uh, comprehensive exam and, and, and the practical exam on design, you know, so it's it's great that we're, we're at that, to that point. I see by probably by next year, we're going to have that designation. We're all working very hard on it, you know, so uh, I'm immediate, I'm immediate past chair, but, uh, you know, we are still involved with them quite a bit in, the, in NBC. And it's been, it was such a pleasure being doing that and seeing and enticing younger technicians into the industry because, you know, we have a shortage of experienced technicians. Everybody, if you talk to any lab, you, they ask, do you know anybody who's looking for a job as a technician? Is they're so yeah. hard to find. Those experienced technicians are hard to find, but it's also important that they know 
the science behind what they're doing before they get into other areas, you know? So I love the cross-trained technicians here. They get so excited about being cross-trained and, and, you know, they don't realize it right away, but, you know, as they're being cross-trained, they're learning all the different aspects of, you know, crown and bridge, occlusion, uh, dentures, uh, you know, everything in between, you know? So, uh, and before you know it, they have this ton of experience and they can pretty do, they pretty much do a lot of different uh, tasks in the laboratory. You know? Yeah. I mean, restorations have to look nice, but they need to be able to function. You know what yeah. I mean? And that, that was a whole, that was a whole ball of uh, wax when you're talking about actual function, you know? Right. So. And we didn't get so, too much into materials. I was real quickly, I want to just mention, yeah. I mean, you have to see how many, how many failed uh, uh, hybrid cases have I've seen over the years, and maybe then Dora also, uh, mm -hmm. with this breakage on a regular basis, even a, even a conversion case for, the, for a provisional. It's it, when they're not done correctly and they're using the wrong materials, maybe they're using, they need to use an acrylic with flexural strength and high impact resistance, a good bond to the denture teeth. When it's when the, the final restoration over a hybrid bar, you wanna make sure there's a great bond between that bar and that denture base material and the denture teeth and enough space so the patient can function. And they can, you know, if you have a bad bruxer, those patients are going to destroy these cases in no time, wow. you know, and then you're going to lose the patient, the doctor's trust and the patient's trust. So you have to make sure Now I can, I can talk about an hour and a half on materials here, but <laughs> because it's really important to, to get the right materials to utilize when you're, you're making these types of cases. 